OTAN Outreach and Technical Assistance Network. Um, so we are here for a quick look at formative assessment. Um, and as I mentioned at the very bottom of this slide, you can see a link. Oops. Okay. Not sure why this is popping up, but let me get this out of the way. Um, at the bottom of my slide, you can see a link to my resources, um, bit.ly slash tdls22 form assess folder. Um, Bitly links are case sensitive, so you need to type it exactly as you see it. Um, and then that should get you to a copy of my slides and also my notes document as well. Okay, so here's our agenda. Um, uh, for the next uh, bit of time here. So um, just for those of you who are not familiar with OTAN, I, I just wanna give you um, a little bit of information about our organization. And then we're gonna take a look at a number of different uh, tools that you might consider using for formative assessment in your classroom. We're gonna start with polling and surveying tools. We're going to then talk about how you can use video to present and assess, um, how to use slides to present and assess. We're also going to talk about some classic formative assessment tools. Um, these are tools that um, I think many of you or um, a number of you have um, learned about in the last couple of years. So think about a tool like Kahoot or Quizlet or Quizzes, something like that. Then we're also going to talk about exit and entrance tickets um, and how you might use those in your class. And then um, again, at the very end, um, if you could complete the evaluation and then the resources folder is there as well. Those resources will be available after TDLS. So please feel free to take advantage of them, uh, share them with your colleagues and all that good stuff. Okay, just a quick word about OTAN. So we are very lucky in the state of California to have um, three uh, different state leadership projects for adult education. Hopefully you're familiar with all three of them. CalPRO is one, CASAS is another, and OTAN is the third. And we focus on technology training for adult educators around the state. Um, so um, af um, besides TDLS, we do a lot of technology training for um, agencies all around the state. So if you ever have any um, need for technology training, please reach out to us more than happy to be in touch with you and see how we can um, help you with your technology training back at your agency. Okay, so let's get started with kind of a definition of formative assessment. So um, this definition, um, I like it. Uh, it says on the screen here, formative assessments refer to tools that identify misconceptions, struggles and learning gaps and assess how to close those gaps. And in my view, um, formative assessment really helps you decide what it is you're going to be teaching, um, what you need to reteach, and maybe what you need not to teach. So um, this is really, you know, important for us when we're working in the classroom and working with our students is that, you know, we walk into our class with a lesson plan, kind of an idea about how the time is going to go in class. And if we're doing formative assessment um, as a part of our work in the lesson, we may come to points in our lesson when we realize we need to kind of pause from the lesson plan, perhaps deviate from the lesson plan a bit in order to, um, because maybe we've identified some sort of a learning gap um, with the content that we're working with with the students. And um, rather than just sort of continuing on with and not really doing anything about it, um, we in the moment um, might want to figure out what it is we can be doing to try to close those gaps in the moment. So rather than sort of leaving them to the end and or until next week or whenever, um, we can use formative assessment in the moment to work on those learning gaps and whatever, whatever it is that the students are struggling with. So it's a really powerful tool as a teacher. Um, and again, it really helps you decide um, what it is you should be doing at any one moment in your classroom with your students. So. So what I'd like for us to do first is um, to start with an exit, uh, sorry, with an entrance ticket. And um, I'm gonna, let me go to the chat. Um, I'm going to put a copy to the entrance ticket in the chat. It's another bit.ly address, um, bit.ly slash capital TDLS 22 and lowercase entrance. So I did put a link to that in the chat. Go ahead and you can click on that link, open up 
the uh, my entrance ticket. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stop sharing and I'm gonna navigate over to that entrance ticket so we can all see that. Um, close this up here. And Okay, let me share my screen again so we can all see what we're looking at here. Okay, so um, what we're looking at here is an entrance ticket. Um, for those of you who have used um, Google Forms before or Microsoft Forms, this is a Microsoft Form, so basically the Microsoft version of a Google Form. Um, so I'm using um, a Microsoft form here as an entrance ticket. So basically, we're coming into the class, we're coming into the session, I want to get some basic information about who's here, things that you're interested in learning about and all that. Um, if you're not familiar with Microsoft forms, Microsoft forms, by the way, I do want to point out this tool that's embedded in a Microsoft form, it's called immersive reader. And basically what this uh, tool enables you to do is, um, Immersive Reader will actually read the text that you see to the um, to the person who's who's looking at the form. So think about your ESL students, for example, or your some of your ABE students who um, you know are still you know um, still working with the language. Um, this might be a great um, tool to use for those students so that they can read the text, but also hear it using the Microsoft Immersive Reader. So um, that's why I like to use Microsoft Forms over Google Forms at the moment, just because that Immersive Reader tool is available. Um, and it, it could be a real, um, a real great tool for some of your students, depending on um, who you're working with. So like a Google Form, Microsoft Form is a dynamic um, form as well. So as students are completing the uh, form, the responses are coming in. So I can see that so far um, I have eight responses. I'm also checking the chat. Susan, did you click on, Susan D, did you click on the link to the bit.ly? Not sure if you're, you're yes, waiting. and I even tried to copy and paste it into my address bar. Keeps giving me the same message on Microsoft and on Google Chrome. I mean, on Edge and on Google Chrome. Okay, okay. Um, not sure how to solve that problem at the moment, Susan, but uh, maybe you can just okay, kind of see. Sorry, what's... sorry okay. about that. That's okay. That's okay. Okay, so looks like so far 13 folks um, have completed this, mostly teachers. We do have an administrator in the room. Um, we have some other folks as well. Always interest, interested to know um, what those other folks are up to back at those <laughs> at their agencies. Um, and then um, I did ask a couple of questions. What's one thing you hope to gain from today's session? And then um, if you have a favorite uh, formative assessment tool, what is it? Um, why did you choose that one? So again, I can uh, take a look and see what my students have um, uh, how this my students have answered this question. So looking for some new ideas, how to use them effectively, uh, help teachers creating common formative assessments. Okay, very good. Yeah, how to close those learning gaps um, once I've identified them with a formative assessment tool. Good. Okay, so good. So we're getting some good responses here. And then also, what's your favorite tool and why? So let's see what people said at the moment. Um, so CASAS, TESS, okay, Kahoot, uh, don't have one, Google Forms, polls, only Google Forms, Canvas quizzes, Google Forms. Okay, so for example, let's, let's think about this from the teacher point of view, right? So I, we've already gotten a number of responses about Google Forms, like people say, yeah, I do use Google Forms already. So let's say in my lesson or my presentation, I was gonna do this whole 20 minute segment on Google Forms. Okay, well, maybe I don't need to do that. <laughs> maybe I should show you all something else because a lot of you are already familiar with Google Forms. Like there's no point in, well, sorry, from my point of view, in the moment as a teacher, there's no point of view in talking about Google Forms when like half of you already know what the Google Form is, right? Maybe I should use that opportunity to teach something else or to cover something else with the content, okay? So this is the power already of the entrance ticket. I'm getting, I'm getting some information about what's going on in the class with my students. And, um, you know, it's helping me to kind of maybe I need to make some adjustments as we proceed through the class or proceed through the 
uh, session or whatever. So this is really what we're talking about in terms of formative, how we can use formative assessment as a tool for our teaching. Okay. All right. So let me uh, stop sharing that. I'm going to go back to my slides. Oops, and I've lost my Zoom. Where are you, Zoom? Hold on a sec. Ah, Zoom, here we go. OK, so we did our entrance ticket already. We're going to move on to the next thing here. All right, so the um, the next thing that I want to talk about here is uh, polling tools or surveying tools. And um, we tend to use these interchangeably. We tend, you know, either call it a poll or a survey, just we think it's the same thing. But there is a difference between polling and surveying. So polling is used, um, a poll is used to ask one question at a time. Okay, one question, next question, next question. Um, while a survey is generally asked um, or used to ask a wide range of multiple choice, uh, multiple questions, sorry. So what we just did with the entrance ticket was a survey, right? Because basically you had all the questions and everybody was able to proceed at their own pace, okay? Versus if we did a poll, if I just asked you a question one by one, then we all proceed through the questions as a group, right? So. Some of us will finish it quicker, some of us need more time, but we're all, if we're doing a poll, um, then we're gonna go one by one. And it doesn't really matter whether you did it quickly or slowly. Um, survey allows you, allows the students to, um, or the respondents to answer the questions kind of at their own pace. So think about this when you think about how you wanna set this up in your class. You always, you know, as teachers, we know some of the students are gonna do the work um, a little bit faster, some are gonna need more time, so that might, decide um, that might help us determine whether we use a poll or a survey in the class. Okay? Um, we tend to think of polling and surveying from other fields, not education, like poli sci or marketing or things like that. So there are a number of tools that are out there. Um, fortunately for teachers, we are, um, we're very smart, we're very flexible. So um, we're able to kind of adjust these tools for use in our classroom or in our settings. Um, so just to, some examples of um, polling and surveying tools, you already might be familiar with some of them. You can use forms again to create a poll or a survey. There's also Swift, Direct Poll, Poll Everywhere, Survey Monkey, uh, Slido is another one. So there are a lot of there are a lot of possibilities. Um, you you might just want to decide on one that gives you the most flexibility, for example. So uh, let me. Okay, so um, right now we're gonna practice with a tool called Swift. So as a teacher, um, you're gonna wanna create an account at this website, swift.excitem.com. I don't know if that's the, <laughs> the best website address, but anyway, that's they decided on that, swift.excitem.com. But anyway, um, in order to create your teacher account and then create some Swift polls or surveys, um, that's the um, address that you're gonna use. Okay, so what I'd like to do now is I'm going to stop sharing that and we're going to do a swift poll. Oops. Let me close that. Let me shift over to my swift polls. Share my screen again. Okay, so I just want to show you kind of what this looks like from the teacher point of view. So what I've done is um, I've gone ahead and created a number of polling questions here. Um, and when you create a poll question, you have a number of options in terms of how you want to um, administer it. Um, you know, the questions you want to ask, do you want to ask a multiple choice question? Do you want to ask an open-ended question? So you have some options um, with this particular tool. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and start the poll so you all can uh, participate as uh, students. And hopefully you'll, I, am, I think you're seeing this on your screen. So you should see the first question, which city was a previous capital of California? Now um, over on the, so I'm, I'm on a desktop view here, or sorry, laptop view here. So on the left-hand side, I see three different ways that I can connect to this poll. I can either text my vote to that phone number, that 916 number, um, I can hold, uh, where's my mobile device? I can hold my mobile phone, up to the screen and I can um, scan that QR code, which is in the middle. Um, or I could go to that website swiftpolling.com and it gives you the option to um, add in the um, poll number, which is uh, 
24574. Okay. And it looks like already, so this is a, di a di the dynamic poll. So it looks like folks are already participating in the poll. Um, you know, so again, this is a great way. So you're, you know, again, think about this from the teacher point of view, right? You've launched this poll, you've asked a question. Um, I'll let you, you know, I'll let you know what the correct answer is in a second here. <laughs> um, but again, in the moment, we can, you know, we, we can be asking questions about the content that we're working on uh, in the class. Okay, so I'm going to pause this. I'm going to kind of close this poll. And I think what should happen on your screen um, is to, um, you should see what the correct answer is. So the correct answer is San Jose. Okay, so it looks like about maybe almost half of the class got that answer correct. Um, the other half didn't. So again, as a teacher, I'm in the moment, I'm like, okay, hold on a second. Only half of my students got this answer right. <laughs> um, is there something that I should do about this? Do I need to pause? Do I need to reteach? Do we need to cover that content again? And then maybe launch the poll later and see how the students do it, you know, with a second go around, okay? Um, so that's that. Let me move on to the next question so you can continue. There was a question in the chat, um, Susan, why not use a Zoom poll? Um, so Zoom poll, in my estimation, is very limited, right? You basically can just ask, I think, a multiple choice question, or um, I think you only have like two question options. So, oh, I think, I, sorry, I think I need to turn this on too. Okay. Um, so you only have a couple of options. So when you start looking at some of these other tools like Swift or Direct Poll or Slido or something like that, it gives you many more options in terms of the questions that you could include in your polling. And okay, looks like maybe there was a little bit of a lag, um, but I see I see the word happy um, to describe your feeling right now. Okay, so it looks like looks like people are chiming in. So this is a word cloud question. So um, for those of you who are familiar with word clouds, basically, um, if, um, if a number of people are typing the same answer, then that word will actually get larger in size. Okay, so it's a way to uh, kind of, um, you know, see maybe maybe you in a way you could ask sort of a multiple choice question um, and see which answers or answers become the biggest answers uh, maybe one of those answers is correct maybe another answer is not correct um, so this might be another tool for you to um, or another way you can kind of check with your students see how they're doing okay word cloud let's move on to the next question This question is, what is one activity you do to stay healthy? I'm going to turn this on as well. OK. Um, this one, um, once we start to see some answers, um, yeah, we basically what we're getting is sort of like a kind of like a waterfall type thing. So the answers are going to come um, sort of in the, the, the answers will appear in the order that they're entered. OK. So here's some great ideas. One activity to stay healthy, walking, yoga, meditation, kickboxing, eating healthy foods, dot, 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 dot. Okay, great. Let's move on to the next one. Now, so what I've done now, and I'm hoping it'll work correctly, is I'm gonna ask you another question and you're actually gonna start a three question survey. Okay, so then you should be able to answer the next three questions on your in your own order. Okay, let me move to the next one. So you should be seeing this first question. Let me turn this on, I believe. Okay. And I think I can have the results at the moment. Okay. So you should be able to answer the next three questions um, on your own. So you have a multiple choice, and then I think you have a word cloud question again, and then I think you have a, a waterfall question. And Lois says, we see the teacher screen. So Lois, hopefully you should be able to see the poll as it's being, or what you should see now is the quick brown fox jumped over the lazy. And you have to answer one of the questions. I still see the last question. 
Okay, there may be a little bit of, okay, there may be a little bit of a lag, right, um, in what you're looking at, so. Who asked the question, can I change the answer? So, um, you, so it's, um, or I'm sorry, Eva, not sure. Um, um, I think that if I remember correctly, when I set up the poll, I think I only gave um, respondents the option to only answer once, and that was it, and, that, and that's your answer. So you should be able to adjust the settings on that to allow like um, a retake or a redo or something like that. So that's why you might choose one polling or surveying tool over another, um, is because you have a lot more flexibility in terms of like how you can set up the questions, what are the options for the students when they're responding, things like that. Karen said, I had to click on the yellow poll tab at the top to go to the next question. Okay. Susan, teacher would administer this live via Zoom. Yeah, so Susan, that's actually what we're doing right now. Um, we're in a Zoom room, but um, I'm able to, yeah, so what, so basically what I'm doing is I'm bringing the poll into the Zoom session so that it's now visible on the screen. And as the students are working on their devices, we're showing the results in real time here, if that kind of conceptually um, helps out. Yeah, you, I, I agree with you too. Swift is, um, I kind of, I've, I've recently discovered Swift, so I'm still kind of playing around with a little bit. I'm not, I'm, I'm not totally 100% versed on Swift, but um, it seems to be pretty straightforward in terms of setting it up, so. Okay, so I'm gonna, let's see, let's go through the questions here. Um, so the first question was the quick brown fox jumped over the lazy, and the correct answer is dog. Okay, so again, it's sort of 50%. It's like, oh, okay, wait a minute, what happened? What happened with this content? Okay, so maybe I need to do something here in this moment, a little bit of reteaching, we can come back and try the question again. Okay, let me go to the next question. What's your favorite day of the week? Okay, and yes, um, those of you who said Saturday, that is the correct answer. Um, good on you. <laughs> but um, like I said, um, no, Saturday is not the right answer. It's whatever day of the, whatever your favorite day of the week is. Um, but um, yeah, you might use this though. However, you know, see which see which answers rise to the top, and then think about okay, do I need to reteach or do something like that? Let's look at the last question here. How um, when might you use a poll or a survey in your class? Okay, good. So we're getting some answers. And as you can see, as the teacher, we have a scroll bar here on the side. I'm not sure what your view is exactly if you have this, a scroll bar as well, but we can actually take a look at all the answers too, okay? By going up and down the scroll bar, okay? Again, this is, you know, another nice thing about polling and surveying, um, you know, doing this kind of an activity in the class is you'll notice that the answers are anonymous. And we know, you know, depending on our students, you know, sometimes students are hesitant to, um, you know, raise their hand or answer the question in front of a larger group. So, you know, I really like the, and I'm sure a lot of you already know this too, but, you know, we really value that anonym anonymity with these kinds of activities because we don't have to focus on any one student, but we can definitely do some error correction, things like that in the class, in front of the entire class. So. Okay, so let me, I'm going to, um, I'm going to uh, switch back to my slides here. Um, so let's go back to the slides. Let me actually stop sharing here. Any questions about um, about the polling or surveying? Any questions about that? Um, I did. I don't. Um, um, I usually say this in the beginning of a of a presentation. So at OTAN, um, you know, we don't. Um, I like to think we're sort of tool agnostic. Like we don't really say, oh, this is the tool you should use or whatever. Like, I, I just want to give you Swift as an example, for example, of polling and surveying that you could do in your class. But really, you know, it's up to you as the teacher to really decide, you know, what's the tool that you, you know, maybe what's the tool that you like, or you really find it to be the most powerful tool to use. So um, we just want to kind of give you the idea about using a polling or surveying tool in your class. So, okay, so let's move on to the next um, item here. 
um, using video to present and assess. So um, the idea here is that while students are watching a video, they can also be answering comprehension questions. So rather than having a student kind of watch a, a video from beginning to end, and then answering the questions after the video, after they finished watching the video, we're actually going to break up the video into segments and we're going to take a pause after certain segments of the video and ask a comprehension question. Okay, so that's kind of the basic concept. Um, this is an activity that you could do in class. You could put this in your LMS, for example, Canvas, Moodle, Google Classroom, dot, dot, dot. There are um, a number of um, examples out there for programs, and actually, there and there and this is also growing as well. I think a lot of folks have figured out that this is a really powerful tool that you can use in your class with students. Because if you're already using video anyway, um, why not make it a more robust activity where you're really checking student comprehension along the way, right? Rather than like waiting and then getting questions wrong and not maybe not necessarily knowing what content I didn't understand or whatever. Um, it's really being able to take that video tool, break it up into pieces, and then check comprehension as we're moving along through the video. Okay. Um, and like I said, there are a number of uh, programs that are out there and growing. Um, Edpuzzle, PlayPosit, TED-Ed. If you use TED Ed Talk, if you use TED Talks in your class, um, there is a teacher um, companion website, TED Ed. Um, and in the TED Ed site, you can also use that to do some of the um, uh, some of these video activities that we're going to show in a second. Um, ESL students in particular, a couple of good sites you might take a look at ESL video and ISL collective um, as well. So we're going to practice with a tool called Edpuzzle. Um, again, as a teacher, you're going to start at edpuzzle.com. And one thing to know about Edpuzzle is like many of the tools, um, you know, many of the tools um, that you're learning about in, in TDLS, um, there's also an app as well. And sometimes that's the easiest um, uh, way to have the students engage with the tool is by downloading the app to their phone. Um, with Edpuzzle, you can either work on your browser, uh, work on your uh, in a browser, or you can um, use the Edpuzzle app. One thing to know is that typically for the first time to use Edpuzzle, it's going to prompt you to download uh, do a download first. So just be, and with any of the tools that you're learning about, just be aware of like, what's the startup process for these tools? Like, you know, you, you wouldn't want to come into a class and like spend like valuable time in class, you know, getting, making sure everybody has art, you know, downloading the app or if they're having trouble or whatever. Um, if they can, if it can be done ahead of time, um, you know, we definitely would recommend that. So, but anyway, just be aware with Edpuzzle that you may be prompted to um, if you're using your phone um, to download the app. Okay, so Edpuzzle. So what we're going to do is, so I'm presenting an, an Ed, uh, Edpuzzle option to you that I that shouldn't, you shouldn't need to create an account, but I can't guarantee that it's not going to happen. So I've set up an what's called an open class in Edpuzzle. So basically that should allow a student to, with a code, and the code is right here at the top, GA, S-I-C-K-U. So with this code coming to the open class, all they all they have to do <laughs> is put in the code and then they should be able to participate in the activity. However, um, depending on your device, it may prompt you to actually download the app first and then you can join that way. But we're gonna go to edpuzzle.com. Here's the address I put here, edpuzzle.com. You're looking for that open class option and then the code is G-A-S-I-C-K-U, G-A-S-I-C-K-U. Let me go back. So let me, I'm going to um, stop sharing my slides for a second. I'm going to go back to, I'm going to go to the Edpuzzle. Uh, give me a second here, navigating over here. Okay. Um, oh, I need to, sorry, share my screen. I'm not seeing anything. Okay. So again, as a teacher, you're going to go to edpuzzle.com. You're going to go ahead and create your teacher account. And then once you are in Edpuzzle, um, basically what you can do is you can have classes, what they call classes in Edpuzzle. So this would be a way you could bring all your students into a class. And then as you're doing Edpuzzle activities, um, everybody kind of is 
um, all the activity is happening within the Edpuzzle class. Okay. So, um, like I said, I've set up um, I've set up this um, open class. It's called TDLS Practice, and you, if you use that code G A S I C K U, you should be able to navigate to the activity. So. Um, what we're going to be looking at is a video on voting. So you will recall <laughs> uh, in the last election, um, there was quite a bit of controversy about voting and elections and things like that. Um, Susan, you can go, you can enter a nickname, you could put in your name, whatever, whatever you would like to do. If you just want to put S, that's fine. Um, you'll see um, so as folks are joining the class, you're going to start the video and then you're going to, the video is going to have a number of pauses. So let me give you, let me give you a minute or so to get into the activity. Um, Anthony, excuse me, I'm sorry. Yes. Um, can you please share that link in the chat? Sure. I will definitely do Thank that. you. Yeah, no problem. Okay, so. So. For to do this activity, do we just join as a student, um, and then uh, still have to sign up? I'm a little bit. I zoned out for just a minute and hope missed one critical thing. Somewhere. Sure, sure, no problem. So, okay, so in the chat, I put the link to edpuzzle.com. So you're going to first navigate to edpuzzle.com. If you're on a laptop or desktop or on your phone, you can open up a browser edpuzzle.com. You're looking for the open class option open class and then so right anybody can join an open class whether it's the students in your class whether it's a group of teachers here in the session the code that you need is g a s i c k u and then that should join the open class called tdls uh i can't remember what it's called tdls something tdls practice or presentation and then you should um you're looking for um you should, I think you might see a couple of tabs across the top, top of one of the tabs has this video assignment. It's called Understanding Absentee Voting, Mail-in Voting, and Early Voting. Mm -hmm. Not seeing the link for the open class. Okay, so uh, let me do this. Uh, let me, I'm not sure whether you can see this, but let me. I'm going to go incognito here for a second. To, let me stop sharing. Let me reshare. Let's see if we it's can. It's kind of smaller. It's on the top right-ish. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So if you go to the edpuzzle.com site, you're looking for this open class. Okay. Click on the open class. I did. There we go. Um, then you should get a window or, or something that looks like this, open class. You put in that code, G-A-S-I-C-K-U, find the class. Here we go. It's called TDLS Practice. Um, you can put in a nickname or just you know your initials, whatever you would like. Join the open class. And then okay, so, there's a video sorry. listed here. Yeah, go ahead. Sorry. So I ended up, I signed out of my teacher account in order because I just created a teacher account. Um, oh, okay. and I had to sign out. So thank you. No problem, Elizabeth. You're very ambitious. I love it. <laughs> okay. So then you're going to come to the video, click on the video. And I think some of you are already in the video, but if you're not in the video just yet, you should, so you'll see the video, gosh, my Zoom stuff's in the way. You'll see the video. And then across the bottom of the video, you see so, kind of like these teardrops or whatever. So these are the places in the video where I've set up those pauses. And you'll notice that actually the kinds of questions that I've asked is here on the right hand side. So I've asked, I'm asking a series of multiple choice questions. So as you, as a student proceeds for the video, when they get to those places, those, uh, those um, stops in the video, the video is going to stop and then a question is going to come up. Okay, so hopefully that's working for folks. Uh, let me close this. Let me see if we're back on. Yes, we are. Okay. And if I refresh my screen, okay. So as a teacher, so as a student, as you all are working on the video, um, I can see that a number of students now have are doing the activity. 
Um, this is kind of the teacher side of it. I'm getting some, some basic information about how the activity is going. So let me, I'll, I'll stop talking here for a sec and um, let you continue with that. And meanwhile, I'll turn to the chat. Give me a second here. Susan, you were asking about um, ready-made stuff. Yes, there is a lot of ready-made stuff on Edpuzzle. Um, yeah, so you don't necessarily need to start from scratch. And let me refresh. Let me just see where folks are here with the question, with their work so far. Okay, so it looks like folks are watching the video, answering the questions. I'll give you another minute or so to finish that up. Just don't check the chat. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let me see where folks are at the moment. Okay, so it looks like some folks are getting close to finishing up. Refresh one more time here. See how we're doing. Okay, looks like folks are getting close. Give me another 30 seconds or so. <clears throat> Susan, you asked an option to slow down the video. Um, I'm not sure that you can. Let's go back to the video for a second. Um, where am I here? Trying to get back to the video. Oh, I think I need to go back to my class. Hold on a second. Yeah, Susan, I think in general, you may not have, uh, you can click on the video progress button and drag it back, but mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't see a slowdown option either, but you can click on that and drag it back five seconds yeah. or 30 seconds. Yeah, I do think, yeah, thanks, Mary. Um, I think that when you're bringing the videos into the Edpuzzle platform, you may lose some of that functionality that you might otherwise get, like on YouTube, for example, or maybe if it's in, L in an LMS, for example. Um, there's kind of a structure to the, you know, to the video assignment here. Um, but you're right. Yeah, you can always drag it back to watch the watch the um, the segment of the video again, if you would like. You can also pause the video too. So. Okay, let me do one more refresh. Let's just see where we are at the moment with completing. Okay, it looks like a number of you have are have finished or are close to finish. So that's great. So maybe what I'll do is um, just in the interest of time, um, if you um, if we could just take a look and see what we're looking at here in terms of as the teacher. So as I mentioned. Um, I, I get kind of two views of what's going on with this assignment, with this activity. So I can see kind of individual students one by one, um, how those students are doing. And then, you know, kind of visually, I can see some students are getting through the assignment faster. Some students are getting, you know, need more time to complete the assignment, so on and so on. Um, I can also see how the students are kind of are doing with the questions. So, you know, if a student is answering most of the questions correctly, if they're not doing so well, things like that. So that's at the at the student level. If I click over to this uh, questions tab, now I'm going to get a kind of a view of what's going on with the entire class. Okay. 
So there, um, there are five questions in the video and I can kind of get a view of the results of those questions. So here um, looks like about, what, about 75% or so of the students got this one correct. So that's good. Uh, this one, not as good, um, a little bit over half. So maybe about 60% or so got this one correct. Um, this one, okay, another 75% or so got it correct. So that looks pretty good. That looks pretty good. Let's look at this last one, 15 out of 29. It's like, oh, hold on a sec. That's barely <laughs> just over 50%. Okay. So again, as the teacher, you're in the moment. It's like, okay, what do I do with this information, right? Because this information is coming to you in real time, right? So as a teacher, you need to decide, okay, I'm at this point in the lesson. What do I, what do I need to do? I've identified this gap, this learning gap. How am I gonna close this gap? What is it that I'm gonna do? So do I need to go back and reteach? Do I need to um, kind of present the content in a different way? Maybe we need to do a different kind of activity. Um, maybe some of the students are you know, better at reading. So if we did a reading activity, for example, well, we'll actually we watched a video, but if you, um, maybe the video, um, ESL students were having trouble understanding the video, so maybe we need to do a reading, maybe that will help close the gap. So again, you know, as the teacher, we want to think about always be thinking about how do we address these gaps as they're coming up in the middle of the class. Okay. Um, any Can the teacher, I'm just looking at the, my chat here. Lois, can the teacher show the video and stop it for each question? Yes, I yes, there is an option. Um, if you do this live mode option, Lois, so you can actually show the video and the students answer in real time on their own devices. So yes, there is that option as well as the teacher uh, for the teacher to do it live in the class as a as a group. Okay, other questions about the Ed Puzzle? Otherwise, we'll, um, and like I said, this is, um, I've really noticed um, kind of of all these, of all these, op, you know, kind of uh, formative assessment tools that you might use in the class, that this video um, option has kind of really started to take off. Um, and we're seeing it actually um, as an option in a number of different tools, um, like Canvas, for example, has that Canvas Studio, some of you know about Canvas Studio, that basically allows you to do something very similar. Um, but again, it's really, um, it's getting to be more and more popular as a as an activity to do in the class. How does this, if the students have joined the class on their phones? So Elizabeth, I think um, um, you can do the activity on your phone um, as well. So you definitely wanna try it out, you know, first. Actually, what I would do is once you, as a teacher, once you set up some assignments, do a practice run through the assignments, but kind of have your have your desktop or laptop and a phone kind of side by side or tablet or whatever. Do you know and do the activity like as a student and see how it's showing up um, in on both uh, loca in both locations. Um, students can do the activities on their phones. Yeah, some of the students don't have laptops exactly. Right. Okay. All right. So let's move on. To the next one. Okay, so the next um, tool that we're going to talk about here, or the next um, option that we're going to talk about here, is using slides to present and assess. So it's a similar concept to the video um, activity that we just did. Rather than kind of watching the video from you know from start to finish and then asking the questions, um, we're doing something different. Same here with the slides. Rather than presenting all of your slides and then doing an activity or asking questions after your entire presentation you're going to do the you're going to take pauses during your presentation to ask those comprehension questions kind of see where students are as you're proceeding through the through teaching your content um, some of the tools that you might consider here poll everywhere mentimeter pear deck nearpod there are other tools as well um, my assumption is you are using something like a PowerPoint slides or Google slides. Um, not everybody, not every teacher does that, you know, in terms of presenting content. But um, if you are, um, or maybe this would be a prompt for you to start doing so, um, because then you are able to um, get this kind of new way of presenting and assessing simultaneously with your students. So um, the tool we're going to practice with is called Poll Everywhere. 
Um, so as a teacher, you're going to create an account at polleverywhere.com. Um, you can create a free, <clears throat> excuse me, you can create a free account at polleverywhere.com. Just be aware that one of the limitations of the free account is that you can only um, have up to 40 students participate at any one time or 40 individuals participate at any one time. So I'm not sure you know, how big your class is or anything like that. You know, 40 should be enough. They actually, um, at the start of COVID, Pull Everywhere actually bumped it up from 25 to 40 because they realized a lot of teachers were using Pull Everywhere and they had larger classes. So um, 40 should be adequate in most cases, um, uh, but just kind of, you know, be aware of that limitation. Okay, so um, with the Pull Everywhere, we're going to do a Pull Everywhere activity here. So I mentioned that if you're the teacher creating the account, your teacher account, you're going to start at polleverywhere.com. If you're a student or on a, a desktop or laptop, um, to participate, you need to go to pollev.com, pollev.com. And then it's going to ask for a code. The code is Anthony B for Bjork, 912. Um, again, Anthony B912. You would use that same code if you want to um, use your phone or tablet. You can actually text um, the code Anthony B912 to 37607. Okay. So there are a couple different ways to join. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the next slide. Okay, so basically we're gonna do a couple of questions in the middle of my slide presentation. So I believe I need to actually um, start the, one sec here, uh, let me do this. I actually need to start the poll everywhere activity. So give me one second and I'm gonna, Okay, so I think it's actually, I believe that is the, are people, yes, people are seeing it. So let me go back to my slides. Um, so I'm sharing, let me refresh this. It might take a second for it to show up on the screen here. I saw that people were participating in the poll. Let me go. Do I need to? One second here. Oh. Let me. Let me see here. Yeah, it is active. So what should be happening is it should be. Gosh, I can't, why is it not working? So the results should be showing up on the slide and for some reason they are not, and I don't know why. So let me show you otherwise what's happening. Um, so this is in my teacher account. Um, so you'll see that um, for this question, um, it's a multiple choice. You can assign students to a Zoom breakout room in all the ways, following ways, except for. So the correct answer here is electronically. Um, so there's that. Let's go on to the next question. Oops, my Zoom again is in the way. Okay, let's go to the next question. So the next question is another multiple choice. Let me see, let me go back to my slides and see if it's showing up. And I think, I'm not sure why it's not showing up. So sorry about that. It should be working and it's not, and that's not very good. Let me just see. Yeah. Oh, good. Paulina, thank you. Yes, this is a poll. <laughs> yes, good. We're learning something, right? So we're going through these questions one by one, right? So we all have to proceed at the same pace. Thank you, Paulina. Why? Oh, that's unfortunate. Why is it not showing up? I thought I had it answered correctly. I think I, there must be. See, oh, PowerPoint slides. Okay, for some reason, I don't know why, know why it's not working. Okay, always test things out before you use them in the class. 
I am sure that, oh, I have not activated it. Let's try. Maybe that's the reason. Okay, so now you should see the question. There we go. We're getting some, we're getting some responses now. Okay, good. Okay, so the, the question here is, what is the name of the Zoom button to invite the teacher to the breakout room? Um, okay, and the correct answer, I'll give a few more folks the opportunity to answer. Let me see if this is showing up in the PowerPoint or not. Why is it not showing up? I thought I had this set up correctly. Oh. Okay, well, the poll, that's, yeah, the results that we are seeing here should be showing up in our PowerPoint slides. And I must have, I've done this before and it's worked out fine. And for some reason, it's not working out now. So I don't know why it's not working out now. Anyway, so when it works correctly, <laughs> the results will show up in your slides. So you actually don't need to go somewhere else. The, um, your answers are going to show up in the slides itself. So that way um, you can get the you can get the results from the students in real time. Let's just see how things are going over here. Okay, so actually for this question, the correct answer is um, ask for help. So looks like more than half of the students got that one correct. Fantastic. Again, as a teacher, you know you have to think about okay, what am I going to do with these five students? Like, um, do I am I okay to move on? Um, do I need to do something in the moment? So again, you know, these are the decisions that you're making as a teacher. Let's do one more. Oops, let's do one more. Um, this should be a, I believe this is going to be a um, one of the um, open-ended questions. So we're going to kind of get the answers. Oh, wait, do I want this question? Oh, actually, I do not want this question. Let me go to the next question. Sorry, I cut you off if you were midstream there. Um, one word, what is your first impression of assessing while presenting? Well, it, my, first, my first impression is um, it didn't work right. <laughs> so as a, as a teacher, you wanna make sure, you wanna make sure that um, you have the activity set up correctly. Again, I'm, I apologize, it's worked before. I'm not quite sure what I did wrong this time to not get it to work correctly, but. So the question, Eva, how do you get the poll into the Google Slides? Okay, and Karen is asking. No, Karen, um, I actually have the, I have it down, I have the PowerPoint actually downloaded to my um, machine and I'm just running it. I'm just running the PowerPoint from my machine. I'm not on the, I'm not on the web or anything. So that's typically how I do it. Um, when you go to the Poll Everywhere site, um, they have a really good help center for um, how you get started with, if you're using Google Slides or if you're using PowerPoint, um, how, to, how to set it up so that um, you're going to be able to actually incorporate or embed the Poll Everywhere activity into your slides. Um, I think in the, you do have to do some downloading of the of apps, I believe, or um, maybe load it. If you're in Google, you're loading it as a uh, Chrome extension, I think. Um, so you have to do a little a bit of legwork in the beginning, and then um, you definitely want to test it out. Um, I should have tested it again. I, I'm not quite sure why it didn't work, but anyway. OK, so that's the basic idea here. Oops, let me go back to this. OK, and that was unfortunate. Okay, but again, with both the um, with both the um, the video Ed Puzzle activity that we did, and then this uh, the slides activity as well. Again, just remember the concept, right? The concept is rather than going from start to finish through some sort of a presentation, you're actually pausing along the way and you're asking comprehension uh, questions along the way to check, you know, see if there are learning gaps, check for understanding. And then in the moment, if there's something that you can do or should be doing to, you know, address those gaps, um, then you know, you know, as a teacher, now you have the information. Now you know, okay, wait, I need to pause here, try something different before we move on. So, okay. Um, all right. So the next item that um, I wanted to talk about here is what I'm calling um, classic formative assessment tools. So as I mentioned at the beginning, I think a lot of people 
um, in the last couple of years have gotten to know these tools, um, one or more of these tools. Um, Kahoot, um, I think is very popular. I think a lot of people know about Kahoot. You're probably uh, using it as a teacher. There's also Quizlet, Quizzes, Formative, Socrative. There are many others. So this seems to be um, uh, this seems to be kind of a popular way for teachers to to do formative assessment in their class. Um, and again, lots of lots of options that are out there. Um, typically, it tends to be the tool that a lot of you know people kind of gravitate to one tool or another, and that's the one that they use in their class. But they all kind of do very similar things. Um, one suggestion um, I have for teachers is, you know, a lot of us have our own individual Kahoot accounts or individual Quizlet accounts. Um, but what about if we were to get kind of, um, what, we, what about if we were to create like a department account or maybe even a school account, depending on the size of your school? And so what we're doing is we're actually investing, we're probably going to have to subscribe, you know, uh, pay for a subscription for a school account. Um, but in that way, so rather than everybody in their own classroom just building their own Kahoot quizzes individually, what if there were kind of a central repository where you all were putting your work into the repository so that, um, you know, then as a teacher, now I have like a lot of different options, not just the quiz, the couple of quizzes that I've created, um, but actually now I, I have a bunch of them from my colleagues back at the school. Um, and then I, I noticed in the very beginning, people were wondering about like common formative assessments, for example, right? So what if a bunch of teachers were actually doing, administering the same Kahoot quizzes or the same quizzes quizzes in their classes? And then you got together as a group and you started kind of looking at that data that you're getting back from the, the quiz results, looking at that as a department or as a school, thinking about, okay, where are some of the learning gaps, kind of the larger learning gaps in our, in our, you know, in our ESL student body or high school students or whatever. Um, so just think about kind of the, the kind of collective power of some of these tools, rather than just kind of doing um, your own thing in your own classroom. Okay. Um, you know, uh, we, you know, we all spend money on textbooks and things like that. And maybe, you know, we might consider actually um, spending some of that book money on subscriptions in some of these tools. Um, and then, you know, thinking about them in a much larger um, way rather than just sort of individual teachers using them. Okay, so um, not a lot of folks know about quizzes. So I thought this would be a good opportunity to do a quizzes activity. Um, so as a teacher, you're gonna get started at quizzes.com. Um, and I always spell quizzes wrong, right? Because there's like <laughs> way more Zs than I'm, than I'm used to. And I'm not always sure where all the Zs go, but it's Q-U-I-Z, quiz, and then I-Z-Z, -Z, so quizzes.com. Um, learners can play at quizzes.com uh, slash join, or you can go to the quizzes app. Um, there's, you know, Kahoot and Quizlet and quizzes, they all have the apps as well. And a lot of students are able to use, uh, do the activity, do the activities on their phone, for example, uh, in the app. Um, you know, another thing about these tools as well is this might be a really great opportunity for your students to actually create their own quizzes. And so rather than you as the teacher kind of always having to create everything, um, what if the students were actually doing this as a kind of assessment, right? So um, they're the ones kind of coming up with the questions. You could also make sure if they're putting in the correct answers with those questions. So it's kind of another way to kind of get an assessment of how your students are doing with the content. So a suggestion. Oh, okay. So let me stop share. We're gonna go to um, quizzes. We're gonna do a quizzes activity. Uh, give me a second to navigate there. Okay, let me share my screen. Okay, so as I mentioned, um, as a teacher, you're going to get started at quizzes.com, Q U I Z I Z Z dot com. Go ahead and set up your teacher account. And then once you're in quizzes, um, you're, you can then get started with creating um, quizzes activities or quiz, I guess, creating quizzes. Um, I did want to point out there was a question, somebody asked a question back when we were uh, working with the Edpuzzle. Um, is there kind of an Edpuzzle library that I can draw from? So rather than me having to start everything from scratch. So the answer with Edpuzzle is yes. 
Um, the answer is also yes with quizzes as well. And I think those of you who also use like Kahoot and Quizlet, you know that there's actually a much larger um, Kahoot library, a much larger Quizlet library that you can actually make copies of, bring them into your account, and then you can adjust them as needed for your students and for your classes. So we have something similar in quizzes as well. Um, when you go to this explore, you can take a look and see lots and lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of quizzes that you can um, uh, bring into your own account and adjust them for your students. So we are going to, uh, where am I here? Um, I'm going to go to my library. So my library is basically kind of my workspace, right? Where, I, where I'm doing, uh, creating my quizzes, bringing in copies of quizzes from other locations. And we are going to do, let me see here, I have to remember which one. We're going to do this soft skills sync quiz, I believe. Yes, this is correct. OK, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and start a live quiz. And sorry, my Zoom is in the way here. We'll do a classic one. So we'll go ahead and continue. OK, so on the screen, um, it's taking a second to load. OK, so on the screen, we have some instructions for how to participate as a student. So um, on my laptop here on the left hand side, you can go to joinmyquiz.com. Um, and then once you are at joinmyquiz.com, or if you have the quizzes app on your phone already, then the code that you need is 320147. 320. Yes, let me I can copy the link. Polina, one second. Oops, that is not the right one. Okay, that should be the link. Let me put in the code again. Three two zero one four seven is the code to join our activity. Okay, so so far it looks like about nine students have joined so far. Um, I believe it gives you the option to put in your name or type in a nick nickname, something like that. Give you all a couple of seconds to join because we want a bunch of folks to participate in the activity. Let me just check the chat again, see if there are any questions. Yeah, Paulina, although I did that and um, it didn't quite come out right. Let me try it again. Let's see if that works. I got kind of a strange code. Maybe I did it the wrong way. Yeah, I'm getting kind of a weird code. Anthony, it's uh, it's the little link kind of symbol underneath or share via the very first symbol on the left. If you click on that, that should work. Oh, I see what you're talking about. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I did not see that. I saw the I saw this here. Okay, let's see what comes up in this case. Okay, there we go. Thank you. My experience is the very, it's the easiest way to share the link because it takes them right to that game you're playing right now. Yeah, exactly. Thank you. Yeah, and it also right it has the um, the code the join code um, the code embedded right in the link as well, so it should take you right there. Thank you. Thank you for the suggestion. Okay, and so it looks like we got about eighteen or so. So um, let's get started. I believe um, when I turn this on, um, some um, annoying music is going to come on. So I will make sure that that's turned off. So. Or maybe only I'm getting the annoying music. OK. All right. So um, oh, and if you could um, try get a question wrong, get a couple of questions wrong, because I want you to see what happens in the quizzes um, activity when you get a question wrong. Okay, I know you're very smart. So, um, but if you can get a question wrong, because I want you to, I want you to see what that looks like for the students. I know some of you are super competitive, like me, and I'm like, I am not going to get anything wrong. So 
So Elizabeth, your question, um, student needs to be in my Zoom class using a computer or tablet if they want to use quizzes on their phone. So that's a good question. Um, I mean, yes, <laughs> I think the answer is yes. Um, but one thing about quizzes is that you actually can embed quizzes activities in your LMS and your students can do them asynchronously. They could do them for homework, for example. So there is actually an asynchronous option with quizzes. And I think that actually um, like Kahoot also figured this out early on in, in um, COVID where it only, it used to be that you, you had to be in the class, like and doing it all together as a group, but then they came up with that. I think they call it their homework option or something like that. Um, so actually students could be doing the activity outside of the class, if that's your question. Um, you can also put a, like a time limit on it, like, okay, between Monday, you know, Monday, 8 a.m. and Tuesday, 4 p.m. is when you can do the quiz or do the activity. So. Okay, um, as a teacher, again, we're getting the answers, we're getting the, you know, we're getting the, um, the results in um, here in real time, right? Um, and we can see as we scroll towards the bottom. Okay, so most students are finished. We have a few students who are kind of um, still answering a couple of questions. So again, you know, I'll just say as those students are finishing, you know, think back to one of the first things that I said was, you know, basically you're either doing a poll or you're doing a survey. That's what you're doing in the class, right? So you want to think about how do you set this up? Um, how do you set up this activity in your lesson, right? And so if you do a poll, you know, um, you know that, you know, some of the students are going to, you're going to go as a group through the questions. Some are going to be faster, some are going to be slower. So, you know, some students might be frustrated on, on either end. As if you do a survey, like what we're, this is basically a survey because everybody's working at their own pace. So again, some students are going to finish faster. Some are going to take more time. So what do you do with those students who finish faster? Do you turn them on to another activity? Do you give them like, um, do you do sort of maybe like a bonus activity or something like that, you know, whatever. So um, again, these are the decisions, you know, you're making these decisions every day as a teacher in the classroom, how you're gonna be administering these activities, so. Okay, it looks like we're almost all finished. So I'm gonna go ahead and end the um, activity here. I do wanna end the quiz. Okay, and so we can do our congratulations for Alexis in third, Polina in second, Tomato, you did it, you are number one. Okay, and then Mastery Party as well. So good, we got a lot of, so this, the Mastery, so again, hopefully some of you saw that um, when the, as a student, when you were going through the questions, if you got a question incorrect, it gave you an opportunity towards the end to redo one of the questions. Okay, so that's kind of a nice little feature of the quizzes activity. Um, and so, you know, with another chance, you know, some of the students actually might, um, you know, might do better. Well, I, you know, hopefully they do better. <laughs> that's the idea, I guess, right? Um, again, we're getting some, you know, results in that, you know, and as a teacher, we want to kind of take a quick look at this and and see if there's anything we need to do about it. Um, so we get kind of this cumulative up here at the top. So for the five questions, this is how our students did. They did best on question two and not so good on questions uh, four and five, okay? So again, you know, like I've said before, you know, this is the moment where as the teacher, it's like, okay, what do I do with this information, right? Do I, you know, I probably wanna zero in on those last two questions in some way whether it's kind of just going back through the questions, you know, checking for comprehension, maybe students um, almost got the concept, but not quite, or maybe there were two diff there were two really close answers and they, they couldn't decide if it was this answer or that answer, you know, that you all know how it goes. But um, again, as a teacher, you have to think about, okay, what am I gonna do with this information? How am I gonna kind of um, wrap up this activity? And if there are still those learning gaps, how am I gonna close those gaps, okay? Um, any questions? I'm just, um, just kind of looking at the looking at what we're at um, in the chat here. Um, okay, good. 
All right, so I'm going to go ahead and exit from here. And um, let me switch back to the slides. We're almost done here. We've got about 10 minutes or so left. Oops, stop. There we go. OK. All right, so that is, oops. There we go. That's the quizzes um, activity. OK, so the last thing I want to talk about before we finish up um, is um, kind of going back to what we started with. So um, we had the entrance ticket at the beginning of the class. Um, but another tool that you might consider is an exit ticket. Um, actually, in the scheme of things, exit tickets preceded entrance tickets. So exit tickets have actually been around for a little bit longer, but then some people said, oh, well, why can't we just do something similar at the beginning of the class as well? And thus was born the entrance ticket. But basically, we use an exit ticket at the, at the end of class, again, to, you know, now we're thinking about sort of the entirety of the class, the entirety of the lesson, right? Um, we use that exit ticket to still, like, what are still the learning gaps that are out there with my students, right? Um, and then, but the idea here is that, you know, the students are completing an exit ticket again it's not a it's not a lengthy activity like you're not asking like 10 questions in an exit ticket you're really only asking maybe one you know one maybe two questions so you really have to think about how you're going to set those questions up right what is what is sort of the essence of the class the essence of the lesson that i need to do a check on so that i can get ready for the next class and if I need to do something about learning gaps, um, misconceptions that are still out there, okay? So um, what I really, I, um, I, I kind of like this model of an exit ticket where you're, you know, you're creating the exit ticket, you're collecting the information, you're collecting the results back from students, and then this information really helps you as the teacher clarify what are my next steps in terms of, um, you know, what, what is it that I might need to be doing, okay? If everything is good, like if students don't have any questions, like if you've taught the 100% the perfect lesson, <laughs> then the clarity is that you're good. Like you don't need to worry, you know, you can move on with certainty to the, ne to the next piece of content. Um, but hopefully the results give you some clarity in terms of, okay, if there are still gaps, what are those gaps? When we come back for the next class and we start the class, we do an opening activity. Maybe we're going back and reviewing some piece of the content that we've been going over where you think there might still be some trouble. Okay. Um, so in terms of exit tickets, you have a nut, you have a, a lot of possibilities in terms of how to structure an exit ticket. Um, checking for student understanding or maybe emphasizing the essential question or the essential topic, the essential grammar point, whatever. So for me, what would be a good question to ask? So definitely I want you all to know the difference between a poll and a survey, okay? So maybe in my exit ticket for today, that's the one exit ticket question I'm asking you. Tell me the difference between a poll and a survey, okay? And that should give you enough clarity to know that people really understand what the difference is. And if they don't, it should come out in the results. And then that's what we focus on when we start the next class. Um, another possibility is that you could have the students ask questions that they still have, right? So you've, you've covered a lot of content in the class. Um, you know, maybe for some students, it's their first time looking at this content. Well, so what are, what are some of the questions that students still have about this content that they didn't quite understand or they're still confused about or whatever, okay? Um, another possibility is to maybe give students the chance to apply the content in a new way or maybe have students solve a problem or answer a question. So again, just think about this in terms of the timing. You don't want this exit ticket to be too involved, right? So imagine like somebody's opening the door <laughs> and they're getting the exit ticket, kind of, you know, their final evaluation or whatever. They're filling it out, handing it back to you, and they are out the door. Okay. So this is not like a 15 minute activity. This is really, it needs to happen um, very quickly, very efficiently. But again, you have to be very strategic in the questions that you're asking in your exit ticket, okay? So um, I do have an exit ticket set up. Um, let me, where am I here? Let me go back to the chat for a second. Um, I will make a copy of that. 
I'm going to pop that in the chat, that link. Okay. So if you want to navigate over to that exit ticket, I did put the link in the chat. If you want to just type it again, remember with the bit.ly addresses, bit.ly slash, whatever comes after the slash with an exit ticket, uh, sorry, with an exit ticket, whatever comes after the slash with a bit.ly is case sensitive. So you have to type it exactly as you see it. So capital TDLS, number 22, lowercase exit, no spaces, all one word, dot, dot, dot. Let me see if um, folks are filling that out. Second. I appreciate all of your patience as well. Uh, my stumbling through presenting and hosting duties simultaneously here. Um, where am I? Let me go back to forms. I got a little bit of a lag, so I'm trying to bring it up. Give me one second here. Entrance ticket, exit ticket. Looks like we got about half dozen responses or so to start. Okay, let me share that screen. <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay, again, um, for those of you, if you weren't here at the beginning, so for the my entrance ticket and my exit ticket, I'm actually using a Microsoft form. Um, those of you who are more Google folks, um, Microsoft form is very similar to a Google form. Um, again, I just want to point out one nice feature with the Microsoft form is there is this tool called Microsoft Immersive Reader. So basically, the Immersive Reader will read the text um, to, you know, it'll read it out loud for the student or for the, you know, whoever's in the session or whatever. So they'll be able to read the text as well as hear it. Um, so again, maybe, you know, especially for like ESL students, but also maybe some ABE students, um, this might be a good um, uh, tool for you to consider. Um, Immersive Reader actually shows up in a number of different Microsoft apps. So like Microsoft Word, for example, um, does have um, newer versions of Word have the Immersive Reader built into it as well. Um, Colleen, I saw your question. I will put the link to the my materials again in the chat. Give me one second. Um, I just put that in the chat. So um, that folder has both my slides and my um, notes document. It's about a four pager or so. Um, let me go, let's go back and see what's going on. So we've got about 13 responses. Okay, good. So, okay, so again, I'm the teacher. I've finished my class. I'm gonna go back and take a look and see you know, what my students were answering. Um, you know, how they answered that question. What is one tool that you will use with your students and why? Okay. Um, so this, yeah, this is good information. So maybe quizzes, maybe Edpuzzle, good, good, good. Exit ticket, Swift. Okay, good. Yeah, really, um, I know, so the title of my presentation, um, a quick look at formative assessment. So um, <laughs> we definitely looked at a lot of things very quickly. Um, but really, you know, I'm hoping that um, I'm hoping that kind of maybe one or two tools really um, stood out for you. And you feel like, yeah, like I want to, I think I, I think I want to use like, I want to start using exit tickets um, for my lessons, for example, or, um, you know, or I want to do something um, I want to, you know, I'm, I'm already using video in the class, so maybe I want to try now to um, see if I could do like an Edpuzzle activity um, so that we can make, um, we can kind of structure those video lessons a little bit differently. Uh, let me go back to actually my slides. Sorry, I'm trying to do a couple of things here. Um, let me, so um, we have a couple of minutes left. Um, I do want to put a link to the evaluation form for this session. Um, I just put that in the chat. So if again, if you could take a couple of minutes just to fill that out, that would be great. Um, I'd appreciate it. In the meanwhile, um, I just have, a, I think, a couple final slides here. Um, three to one reflection tool. I, I always like people, you know, at the end of a presentation to just think about, 
you know, we really did do a quick look at a lot of different things today. So, um, you know, um, I always like people to kind of reflect on their learning. Um, so three things that you learned today, um, hopefully you learned at least three things, um, two things that you will share. So what are, what are a couple of these tools? Maybe you want to share back at your agencies with your, um, taught with your other teachers or with your administrator. And then definitely like one thing that you'll try. So hopefully, like I said, there was a tool that kind of stood out for you today. You're like, yeah, I think I, I think I can use that in class. Like I feel pretty good about it. I feel like I can get that set up with my students. You know, we're all, you know, we're always thinking about how do we better engage the students in the class. And um, as I mentioned, formative assessment really is, you know, it's such a powerful tool. Um, any and any and every way that we can make use of formative assessment, I think is gonna make us a better teacher. It's really gonna help the students with their learning. Um, it's going to be, you know, help help them be more productive with their learning. So, um, 